with many specifying the U.S. red states. City Walk, City Wall here, and welcome back to City Skylines, Mars. This episode, we're going to focus on a few utilities for the city. And for the most part, I'm putting utilities around the edge of the dome, because usually there's like an industrial building involved, and it pollutes, and it makes citizens sick, and this is a very cramped city, so I don't really have much choice. The industrial has to go near the residential. Utilities around the edge of the dome is as good as I can get, but sometimes it's still not good enough. So a couple episodes ago, I used the Customize It mod to fix some pollution issues because of just the proximity of how close everything is. And this episode, we're gonna do a different technique that's gonna allow us to have two services that function in the game the same way that I would imagine that they would function in an actual Mars colony. So we're gonna create our water service, which will actually give Sims in the game water. And we're also gonna create a public transportation hub. The first thing that I wanted to work on this episode was a public transportation depot for the cable cars. These cable cars, when I made them, because of the way that I did like the texturing of the actual asset, I could only have different graffiti on one of the you know sides of the cable car. And it's kind of lazy of me to have done that, but at the same time, it gave me a really good opportunity to kind of invent a story around why that might be. And so I want this place to be kind of like a storage and charging facility for these cable cars. I'm imagining that each of these has a little motor and a battery in them, and that's how they are able to get around on the wires. And so when they run out of charge, they need to come back to this facility and maybe have someone like come and clean out like the trash that is accumulated inside of it. And it just like sits there for 12 hours or however long it takes to recharge. And this is a place where there's not like a lot of surveillance. There's not a lot of activity around here. It's mainly just cable cars charging. And so I wanted to create a way for citizens from the lower parts of the city to like climb up here to where these cable cars are charging and, and do graffiti on them when uh, they can sneak like in between shifts of guards or shifts of like trash cleaners or things like that. So the first thing that I did was create a new cable car stop out here so that we could actually see cable cars coming in and out of this facility and made like a Y split in the cable car line and had like a second one that would maybe be where like cable cars could get picked up off of their original cable and move to like a storage cable off to the side. And so I wanted to make some sort of like crane system where like a cable car could get lifted up from the cable that they're on and moved elsewhere. So I got this awesome asset that's a network concrete piece by Captain Roberto on the workshop. I used that to create two like beams that would support like a crane kind of thing that could roll back and forth along the, the beams. I used like a shipping container crane piece for the bottom and then one of those capsule apartments for like the center control part and then like a radio mast sticking out the top and the coolest part about that is I used some more of those single wires that I was using a couple episodes ago to connect from each of the three radio masts sort of like it was providing electricity to the central crane piece that rolls back and forth and what's so cool about that is 
those electrical wires. I guess all electrical wires have like a little bit of wind sway like built into the code of the game. And so if you look really closely at those, they're like swaying back and forth, which is really awesome. So the next thing was just building out this area where the cable cars are actually stored. And so I wanted it to be like rows. And so I just needed to make one row and then I could copy that. I made like a single segment of cable car network and placed down some cable cars on it and made a big long walkway that goes in between. And I made sure that all the cable cars that are parked in this facility, they're arranged in a way where this walkway only faces the sides that have graffiti to kind of justify that texturing thing. I have this like trussing network asset that I placed below the walkway to kind of look like it's giving it some support. And I also placed it above the walkway and put a bunch of wires going through it. I wanted like the main functionality of this place in terms of what like people actually do here to be, you know, collecting trash and cleaning out the, the cable cars. And so I put like a trash can and some trash around each of like the doors of the cable cars. And underneath I placed these sort of big futuristic building assets that I have. And there's two of them and they're facing each other and they kind of make like a V shape in their roof. And so I put a lot of trash that's collecting down there and like that little trough. And I'm figuring that this building is sort of what charges these cable cars like wirelessly. I made it as bright and glowy as possible by putting like a bunch of lights on those upper trussing networks. And next to this thing, I placed down this vertical farming building that I have that doesn't really, I'm not thinking that that's what it is, but that's just what it's called on the workshop. I think in this case, it's probably more of like an office building that um, has something to do with these cable cars or transportation in general. I connected that building up to the actual cable car charging building with these pedestrian walkways. And on the far side of this building, I thought this would be a good place to create an area where the people who live down below in the slums could like climb up the side of the crater face and get to this cable car charging area. Like there'd be like a secret hidden path going up that way. And so I created a little fenced off area with like a bunch of trash and things. I'm imagining that this is like people in the slums like maybe guard this area or there's some sort of like illegal activity going on in there. There's some tents and things. And then at the back of it, there's a series of ladders that you can climb up and get way up higher on these rocks and get yourself like onto this cable car charging area. And so I put a bunch of graffiti along this whole little pathway and a bunch of trash. And there's a guy sleeping, I think, up there and two people sitting and looking over the cable car charging area up on this rock. And I think the fact that I textured these cable cars in sort of like a lazy way ended up causing a pretty cool thing that it just made me have to create like a very, very unique and specific area around that fact and create a story around it in a secret little passageway. And it's crazy how something like that can just snowball. And next thing I know, I have an area with these two little guys looking over this cable car charging facility. The next thing that I wanted to work on this episode was another sort of public transportation area. And unlike the last one that was more sort of in terms of how the game actually works, it's a decorative thing. This one I wanted to have some actual functionality. I wanted this to be where the helicopters, which are actually blimps, uh, really spawn. And I always was thinking that I would be hiding this blimp depot building because it's like so normal looking, but it was really exciting to build this and figure out that I could just use it as it was and you can really see it in this build, which is cool. So I have this really awesome metal prop that I use a lot for like industrial walkways and things and I scaled it up really big with procedural objects and started using it as like a surface for a really big helicopter depot and so I had this blimp depot asset here and I was thinking that I would be using these pieces to cover it up for the most part and so I just started placing them around um, I rotated some of them to be vertical so that I could have those metal things as like 
side pieces, like big, real tall retaining walls, sort of covering up the actual like retaining walls that come with that blimp depot building. And so I placed down some helicopter pads, three of them in a row, some blinking light props like around the edges of each of them. And I wanted this helicopter depot to feel like it was kind of going up the side of the crater. And so I wanted different heights of where these helicopters were going to be. So I made like another level just a little bit higher up and, and directly behind this first set of three. So there's a second set of three. And then I did it again a third time so that there's like one top level. And that one had a little bit of this blimp depot sticking up through it. It was like too high. And obviously I can't turn that blimp depot into procedural object or anything because I need it to be a functioning building. And so I used this Azadi tower by Ronix69 to kind of cover that up and scaled it way down with procedural objects so that it can be kind of like the base of something. On top of it, I put one of these new Sunset Harbor circular water tower buildings that kind of looked like a UFO. And so I was thinking that this would be like a control tower and should have some windows around the edge. And so I used the prop line tool to create a perfect circle uh, made out of the automatic door prop by Revo. And I thought that was pretty cool, like a custom control tower made out of all these different weird pieces put together in a crazy way. And so that top level of the helicopter depot has six helicopter pads. And I'm thinking that's where the public transportation helicopters kind of come and maybe refuel and get serviced and that kind of thing. And we're also right next to the Jacoby Medical Center here, you know, the hospital. And so the lower two levels I was thinking was a similar thing, but for the medical helicopters. I wanted medical helicopters to actually spawn here. And so I placed down a bunch of the Ninja Noob Slayer medical helicopter spawners and these require road access. So I had to figure out a way to get a road to come in and underneath this entire helicopter facility. And so over by where the algae tanks are and where that kind of like secret entrance way to climb up the ladders is, I made like an offshoot of one of the conveyor belts and had it just go like straight into the rock there. And then it also goes like directly underneath the blimp depot and gives that building road access as well. So the blimp building is actually functional and this is now where all those public transportation helicopters can spawn from, which is really cool. And all I really had to do was detail this thing up. I put some more of that metal texture on the ground to match the rest of it. I added a helicopter to the line so that I could pause the game right when it spawned and see where it spawns from like exactly and placed like a helicopter pad down there and made like a pair of tracks that would in theory like carry this helicopter sort of into that dome shaped building where it could have you know maintenance done on it or something like that and so there's a helicopter in there outside I just placed down some weird little procedural objects buildings and things and kind of made a cool little shape out here. The last thing that I wanted to do here was just fill out this little alleyway and this empty area that I still had left. I took a bunch of buildings, placed them down, placed down a bunch of retaining walls and buildings inside of buildings and created just like basically a really big blocky wall thing. I'm thinking that this is like maybe where they store, I don't know, like helicopter fuel or something that they need to service either the helicopters or the cable cars. Maybe it's like the big control machines that run the, you know, drone helicopters, you know, pilot them or, or make sure that the system of cable cars is functioning. I placed some kind of taller buildings in the back of this to cover up that actual cable car stop. And there's this great one that I've used uh, a couple times before that has this sort of like double entranceway thing that actually worked out perfectly with these cable car lines looking like they were going into the building. And I got another building that's like some sort of office building and turn that into procedural objects as well just so I could fit it perfectly on the top of these two other buildings and so it looked kind of like this was maybe an office building on top and underneath had a place where cable cars went inside of it and then down along the bottom of this building like in the alleys down below I just did a good amount of detailing placing shops and stalls and decals and graffiti and things one of the things that I did in order to do this, which made it way, way easier, is off to the side, I spent a few hours like making a bunch of different sets of market stalls and saving them as procedural objects exports so that I could open up the procedural objects mod and just pick like stall seven. And then that comes with 
three very unique stalls in a row and I can place that down and then get stall you know, whatever two and put that behind it and that's another three stalls and you can make a bunch of detailed stalls way easier, way quicker and because it's procedural objects, it doesn't count towards the prop limit. So that's my strategy going forward with that. I also placed down on this wall a bunch of these new Mars signs that have been created by you guys. They're pretty awesome. There's like 30 of them now and they're really, really detailed and cool and uh, very specific to this project. So thank you obviously to everyone who's participated in that and made some stuff. It's turned out really cool and um, it's kind of an open-ended project. So if you want to continue making stuff and submitting it to me, uh, the place to do that is on Discord. So we'll maybe have a second pack at some point soon. The last thing that I worked on this episode was something that I've been planning since at least a few episodes ago when I made those giant pipes leading out from like that central government building. I mentioned in that episode that the city is probably sitting on a really large underground reservoir of ice and so those pipes are leading to like a facility where they drill down to that ice, melt it, and bring it back up to the surface. I actually started building this at that same point in time when I was building those pipes. I was doing a live stream for patrons only and it was one of the first live streams that I've done and so I was trying to just test and see how I could go about building things in the city and not ruining spoilers and things. So I built the first part of this like outside the dome in like a little area that I made specifically for this. I just like ruined like a little part of the map and I started off by just picking some buildings that I thought would go well together. I had a little segment of that giant pipe thing copied out here so that I could you know take that into account and build like an ending for that pipe to terminate into but I just detailed these up with um, a number of other like littler buildings clipped together and tanks and walkways and pipes and lights and all sorts of things this was pretty fun putting together but when I brought it into the city it was much smaller and like not as cool or impressive looking as I was hoping it would be. So what I decided to do was use that same oil industry building that was already there and make it like really big, like almost the size of a skyscraper and have like a water tank at the top of that, like a much larger one. And the one down below I deleted. There's a building that I used when I made the pipes. That's like this industrial building that I scaled way down and made it much smaller, but I just placed it down regular size here. They're really, really tall. I put three of them in a row next to each other. And then in front of that, I did a cool thing where I took these smokestacks and PO'd them so that I could turn them 90 degrees horizontally and made kind of like a ladder looking thing. I'm imagining this is maybe a radiator of some sort. There's like some more white lights on the sides where those pieces are. There's some more red lights at the top where like steam would come out of the of the top of it. And in the back where there are these like much larger smokestack, steam stack sort of things like on ground level, I put some more yellow lights. And so that lights up kind of the rocks around there with a more yellow light. A lot of these buildings in here are functional industrial buildings. And so I needed a conveyor belt to go through this whole area kind of. And so that conveyor belt that goes underneath the helicopter depot, I had pop out of the uh, underneath of that building here and kind of make its way through this entire facility and this area. I had to do something kind of unique with the conveyor belts because these pipes are at the exact same height as the conveyor belt. So I had to use some of the sloped conveyor belts to go like down and underneath the pipes and then back up to the regular height. This uh, kind of gave me some flashbacks to building the central sorting facility. And then I built like a really big wall um, and I'm thinking that this wall is here because this is a really high security kind of place. And so I made the wall pretty thick. I put 
what as close as I could get to barbed wire on either side of the wall and enough room on the top of the wall so that I could put some little military men who could walk back and forth on it. There's also an entrance to this facility where there's like an another four military men standing there. And the last thing I did was just detail up this area, you know, between the facility and the wall. So I put some buildings in there. I put a lot of ruined pavement decals on the ground and at the far end there's sort of like a tunnel entrance where maybe you could walk down into the ground and some pipes leading in there and I'm imagining that there's probably a really large underground storage thing that uh, they would maybe store water. I also used another one of these new Mars signs which are available on the workshop. I had the walk industry one and I used procedural objects to make it really really massive and put it on the side of this main building here. It has a rim around the edge of it made out of expressway pillar concrete pieces and I turned it much darker than its original color using procedural objects that it blended together with a lot of these buildings. The last thing that I did was just make this functional as like an actual place that provides water to the city. And I'm using water towers in this series because I don't want to have to like make a lake that has like water pumps like sucking water out of it or something like that. I want there to just be water. But the problem with water towers is you have to be super super careful about pollution, like ground pollution around them. And almost all of the buildings that I placed here are polluting industrial buildings. So what I had to do was one by one, turn all of those into procedural objects and then use this really awesome asset that's called Block Services by Nalen. And these are a bunch of little one by one cubes. There's like police cubes, healthcare cubes, park cubes, cemetery cubes. Um, and in this case, I used an industrial building cube to replace that industrial building with another functioning one. But in this case, I had used the Rico mod to set up the industrial cube so that it doesn't pollute. So then I placed down a couple water towers and moved them into the center of one of these buildings. And immediately I was just overrun by a death wave of citizens because pollution in the ground, like ground pollution in this game lasts an insanely long amount of time. So I just had to let the time lapse run out for a while and slowly the pollution levels just like tick down from I think like 12% to 0% eventually. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. It was a little bit of a change of pace from last time around with a lot more industrial and service kind of things getting built, a few different things getting built. Next episode, we have a special guest building in Mars, Skibbeth, who is one of the all-time greats, a PO master, absolute wizard at detailing. So he does an insane build and he'll be here to do some commentary about it. If you want to check out some of the lore kind of behind this project, there's a wiki going that is linked in the description of this video. We have a bunch of awesome people on Discord who are teaming up to put that together. So if you are interested, um, join up on Discord and, and you can find out how to get involved. Also on Discord, you can find out about the build-off competition that we have going on. So head over there. A lot of fun stuff happening. That's it for this episode, and I'll see you all next time on Mars. Mm -hmm.